to where are they now? And today I am joined by a former light middleweight champion, my man, it's the Bronk, Bronco McCart. <laughs> What's going on? All right, man. Everything's good. Thanks for having me. Hey, hey it's great because you're a boxer. And everybody have all the interesting stories. I did NBA stuff and baseball stuff, and you know they have the the great journeys with boxing. They have all the stories from when they first started boxing to their career and, and afterlife. So we're gonna we're gonna do this from the beginning, the beginning stages. When did you start boxing? I started boxing at the age of fourteen. Um, I came up through two little golden gloves. I uh, I was running around with a lot of bad guys. My dad was a boxing coach, so he kind of sat me down one day and said, man, listen, I'm going to step in right now and change your life. Every day when you go from school, you're going to do something with me. I, he was training fighters. I'd go to the gym. I didn't like it. You know, I got in a box. This one guy in the gym that was beating everybody up. I got in with sparring him, hit him with a right hook, knocked him down. I thought, wow, man, I can do this. <laughs> you know, and then I just took off from there. I came up through the Golden Gloves, Toledo. I won the Golden Gloves like five or six times. And, um, won some other small titles as an amateur, made it to the national level in 92, and then got beaten in the national tournament, and uh, I think it was on my third night or whatever, and I said, well, either go pro or get a job. So I told my dad, I said, I'm ready to go pro. And he asked me one question. He said, sit down, I'm going to ask you one question. I said, okay. He said, why do you want to turn pro? I said, I want to be world champion. He said, let's do it. And I said, what was the point of that? He said, if you would have said, I want to do it for the money. I just want to give it a shot. I want to see what it's like. I told you, just go get a job. But if you want to be world champion, let's go to work and get it. That's what happened. Training, that's the, one of the most rigorous things in boxing. How did you develop your skills going to your professional post to your amateur career? Was it an extra step harder or more? Oh, it was a lot more work than amateurs. And like I would fight, say, when I was fighting my four round fights. I would fight a uh, fight on Tuesday at the Palace. Like they had them Tuesday night fights. They used to be on TV a lot, USA Tuesday night fights. I'd fight on Tuesday. I would take Wednesday and Thursday off and go right back in the gym on Friday and train Friday, Saturday, take Sunday off, back in the gym the full week. You know, a lot of guys would fight the fights, take four or six weeks out of the gym, celebrate like they did something big. To me, I'm thinking that was just a four round win. I want to get to that next level. So I, I came up under James Tony who was the uh, undisputed middleweight champion of the world, one of the most feared guys in the 90s, was the pound for pound number one fighter in the world. I came up under him. That guy treated me like a brother, man. He took me all over the world with him, you know, and he just, he treated me good. So uh, I came up under his work ethic. When he was champion, he trained like a dog. And that guy was, that guy was legitimate. Let's go back to when you first started fighting. Do you remember your first boxing match? As a pro or as an amateur? As a pro. Oh yeah, I definitely remember my first match. It was at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Um, I, bar I barely remember the fight because I remember walking out of the tunnel, walking into the crowd, and about they estimated about 3,000 people from Monroe showed up for my first fight. And when I walked out and I heard the roar, because I was like the last fight, I was that, I was that after bout when everybody's supposed to be gone. I heard that big roar. It's like my body went numb. You know, I was so excited. Went in the ring. I do remember I knocked the guy out, but I, I, I don't hardly remember the fight because it was just such a numbing thrill for me. No, was it? A hard process going up in in the rankings after oh, yeah. your first win. How, how how did the process go for you? Well, I stayed busy. There was that one time I fought twelve times in one year. I mean, that's a lot of fights, you know. But I, I remember one day laying back in the my dad always drove to the gym. I was laying back in the car and just kind of had my head looking at the ceiling. He said, "What are you thinking, champ?" And that's what he always called me, champ. That's what I call my son. I said, "Man, dad, I'm thinking it's gonna be a long road to the top." He said, "Hey, man, we're just taking one fight at a time. But before you know it, you're gonna be there." And uh, he was right, but it, it was a lot of hard work. When I was training full-time, because that's all I did when I, when I was boxing from 92 to 05, all I did was box, no, nothing else. So I, had, um, I would get up in the morning about 6, 6.30. I'd go run. Usually I'd run to the gym, have my dad meet me there with my bags. I'd run to the gym, go in there and do like a two-hour workout, get done, go home, take a nap, go, go to the boxing gym in Detroit at noon, Work out from noon till about three thirty four. Come home, eat dinner, nap, then go back to the gym for another hour workout. Wow, so boxing was just life. That was it, man. <laughs> I, I did it. I, I worked out like that four days a week, and then Wednesday and Saturday I just did two hour workouts, just two hour workouts. So that was like a break, man. Two hour, <laughs> two hour workout was like, man, it's gonna be a good day, you know. <laughs> what about fighting in different states? You, I know you fought in Connecticut. You fought at what, Morgan Sun. Yep. Yep. And fighting in Vegas, 
what's the difference between fighting locally at, at, at in Monroe or at the Palace or Cobo opposed to fighting in, at the casinos? Well, I, I, one of the things when you fought at the casinos, you run into a lot of movie stars. I remember the very first time I fought in uh, my big uh, Las Vegas uh, with uh, Caesar's Palace. James Tony was fighting on down the event, and so was Roy Jones. Not each other, but they were fighting separately. Man, I ran into Bruce Willis and Demi Moore and, I mean, Montel Williams. I was seeing all these people, and I was starstruck. I'm 21 years old, and I'm just a puppy out here seeing all these people. I'm, I'm all starstruck and stuff. But they say, they say in boxing, um, when, you, when you get to fight at uh, Madison Square Garden, Caesars Palace, MGM Grand. Atlantic. Yeah, Blue Horizon. Um, you know, you, you, you fought, you got to fight in the meccas of boxing. So I've been blessed, man. I got, I got to fight at Madison Square Garden. I fought all different, a lot of different spots in Vegas. Um, Blue Horizon a couple times. My, my favorite place to fight, I think, was uh, Soaring Eagle Casino, Mount Pleasant. I just loved how they treated me there. I loved the atmosphere. It was just, that was probably my favorite place to fight. I really enjoyed it there. I really did. Had a lot of success there, too. <laughs> was you nervous your first fight and on the big stage? I was nervous every fight. I had 68 professional fights. I was just as nervous in my 68th as I was in my first. I was always nervous. I just wanted to perform well. You know, you, a lot of things go through your mind. But uh, yeah, I was always nervous. And you won a title before the fight. I just want to know from a boxer, what's the anticipation like going to your first title fight? World title fight. World title. I was so I was so set in my mind that I was going to win. That it, it, I, I actually was, I actually was sort of calm going into that fight because I just knew that it was meant for me, you know, and that I had put in all the work and everything that was supposed to happen for me was going to happen on that night. I knew it. I just knew it. And you, you, you coasted out a victory that yeah, night. Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Now take me back to when you, you got the decision and you got presented the belt. Was that just like a big weight lifted off my shoulder and oh, I'm man. finally crowned? Yeah, yeah, it was. The Mecca. <laughs> yeah, man, it was. It was. You know, I was really cl close with my grandpa Smith, my mom's dad, and about a year before I got to fight for that world title, he, he passed away. And um, I told him when he was in the hospital, I said, "You know, Grandpa, I, you know, I've never, I've never visited a grave site in my life." You know, and I said, "But when I win this belt, I'm bringing it to you. You are gonna see it." You know. So I remember um, I had a shirt in the ring and I had a picture of me and my grandpa. I was hugging on him and it said, for you. That's all I said on the bottom, for you. And I've had five of those shirts because I trained in them every day going up to that fight. And there was so much emotion involved. I remember when they crowned me champion, you know, I fell to my knees. I was crying. You know, when they stopped the fights, I stopped them to win the title. And I was crying. And, and we had bought a, a seat, a ringside seat for my grandpa. Paid $100 and put his hat, just his hat, because I was wearing a floppy hat. Had his hat in there. and. Uh, you know, it, it meant more than winning the world title to me. I kept a promise to my grandpa on his deathbed. So I, I had to win that. You know what I mean? I had no choice but to win that. I had to win that. And you won it. Yeah, I won it. And you won it. How, won it. how, how was the, the star life after just winning? Did you, I know you got mad love when you came to Toledo. Yeah, yeah, it was, you know, it was, uh, it was crazy. And it was kind of, it was, some of it was kind of weird because people I had known, you know, pretty much my whole life. So I almost started, some of them started treating me and acting a little different. I'm thinking, man, you know, man, we've known each other, you know, I'm still the same guy. And I always try to live my life and present myself that way. Um, going up to the title, winning the title, losing the title, fighting for other world titles, all, all, all through my career and through my life. I've always been the same guy. I pride myself on that, man, because I don't care if you're worth a billion dollars or if you sleep under the bridge. I promise you, you get the same respect from me because I just respect people, right. you know. And that's what makes you very respectable. Mm -hmm. And you came in, you know, let me interview you, so it's, it's all over here. So. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then defending your title, did you go against Winky Wright? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, man. Bring him up. That's right, my boy, right. though. Me and Winky's tight. <laughs> that leading up to that fight, because nobody never heard of him until he, he, he beat Shane Mosley. Mm -hmm. you, you know him before the whole boxing world. Yeah. Him. Take us to that fight. Well, um, I watched tapes, I studied tapes of him. I, I laid out a game plan exactly how I thought I was going to need to fight him to beat him. And in the very first fight, I, I did everything that I thought I was supposed to do. I still feel I won that fight. I lost a split decision by one stinking point. <laughs> and now I get to think about this sometimes, it still makes me nuts. And it was, what, 96. So, But um, 
Going into that fight, I thought I was going to beat him. He was the number one contender. I wanted to get the top dog out of the way right off the bat and then just ease through and pick out who I wanted, you know, out of the top ten after that and you know, make some money and call it a day. And it didn't work out. You know, I lost a split decision to him. Then I had to come right back through the ranks and, and do it again. Ended up fighting three times, you know. And uh, because at that time, me and Winky were the two best, you know. And had it not been for Winky, he, you know, I mean, it, it's funny how it can, your whole direction can change. I mean, I, I but I flew down to Florida a couple years ago. We went out and played some golf. And uh, it was funny because I got back to the hotel. My, the girl I was dating at the time, she said, well, how'd it go? I said, he beat me. She goes, man, babe, you got to beat him at something. <laughs> I was like, are you going to say that to me on vacation? Don't say that to me. <laughs> and we laughed, you know. But I stay in touch with Winky. As a matter of fact, I might be going to Florida in about a month or so. And if I do, I'm going to call him up and maybe go play some more golf with him. <laughs> Y'all still talk about the, the, the trilogy between you? Funny part was, man, we, when we were on the golf course um, playing, we talked about every fight in our career, except mine and his. Never even mentioned it. Never even talked about our fights. Whoa. Yeah, they already talked about it. Cause every every other boxer would get together and just reminisce on that. You yeah. know, it may it may take some years to talk yeah. about, but you guys kind of like water under the bridge, or y'all just act like it never happened. Nah, we just you know we do, <laughs> you, you, you fight a guy three times like that. There's a lot of outside the physical. There's a lot of emotional involved in it, and man, we just we just build a rapport, build a friendship. Oh, okay. that's 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 kind of different, in in a way, cause I never really seen boxers do that. I know I know Foreman and. And I know that a lot of guys like Ali and Frazier ever did that. I don't know if they had that little riff going on. Maybe, to maybe. Frazier's death. Yeah. yeah. But I respect that. That's, re that's really great for you know, you know, boxers to do that and come out and just, you know, just be cool about yeah, it. Cool, but, but, there's, there's, but there's really no bad blood in it because I know it's just a sport. Right. You, you got you to gotta pay your bills. Sometimes, sometimes between certain fighters there's bad blood. Mm -hmm. I've never really experienced it. You know, I get along. There's, I, I, I stay in touch sometimes with guys like Kelly Pavlik. Um, Travis Sims, I fought the WBA title match square guard. We stay in touch. Um, actually, my last fight that I got beat, Tony Harrison, I was just with him at a uh, an event in the gym. It was me and him, Tommy Hearns, Bill McCrory, Jimmy Paul, all of them all-time greats, and we were just all there doing a fun little thing. And you know, it's just business. And career-wise, if there is a fighter now that you look at, who would you compare yourself, your fighting style to now? Hmm. That's a good question. I, I don't really... It seems like this, this, the game has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, the styles have changed. Everybody wants to try to be pretty like, like Floyd, yeah, be yeah. the little defensive monsters. And that's good. You know, you do what you do to get by. But um, I, I don't know. I, 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 you know what? Maybe that, maybe that Sergey Kovalev. Oh. You know, I, couldn't be, I couldn't beast like he could. Man, <laughs> but I like his fight style. He, he fights and he can box when he wants to, but he comes to get you. You know, I was the kind of guy that I could always box, mm -hmm. but I didn't mind getting in the cage and, and getting in the ditch and fighting either. I like that too, so I, I, I'll, I'll give myself cold enough. You just box at work, or you're like a blue collar boxer. Yes, you yes. just work any, any, and, and, and get by doing it. And that's what I really respect about your fighting skills. And now, let's, let's talk about the state of boxing now. MMA is starting to take over, and boxing, nobody don't really know anybody besides Mayweather and Pacquiao. What are some things that you want done in, in the state of boxing to make boxing up there again? Like when you're in your time when you had Roy Jones and Trinidad and guys like that, and nobody don't really know a lot of the guys now. No, they don't. And PBA is, um, you know, the PBC boxing That's is doing a, good a, thing, is doing a good thing by putting it on national TV where everybody can have access to it, even if you don't have cable or, yeah. and be able to watch it and, and get into boxing. Is that a good step in the right direction to get boxing yeah, I think I think you've almost pretty much answered your question because that that's what I think that what they have going on with the the fights on Fox and the NBC, Spike TV, ESPN still doing fights, all them free channels and putting on big fights. Good fight last night, Danny Garcia and Robert Guerrero on on uh, Fox Sports. Great fight, you know, good for TV. So they're putting it back out there. That's what MMA did. I mean, every week you would turn on the TV, there'd be an MMA fight on there, and then the following week it'd be a pay per view. But they so, but I. I I hear this a lot about MMA taking over, and I, I tell people, check the numbers. If you check the numbers, boxing still way out does. E even the fights that they're putting on uh, Fox Sports and all that, those numbers will outdo any MMA show that they probably do this year. The numbers are always better for boxing. It's just, you're right, though. When, when you, there was a heyday. There was a certain era of boxing. When you, when you had Leonard, Durant, Hagler, 
Benitez, Hearns, uh, all them guys, man, in the same division, all fighting each other. And then when you had Ali, Foreman, Frazier, Shavers, yeah, Norton. I mean, you're talking about the top ten heavyweight division then mm -hmm. would all be heavyweight champions now. The heavyweight champions now would be lucky to be in the top ten back then. I mean, it's just a different, different breed of guys, man. So you think that boxing should eliminate a lot of the weight classes? Because I, I kind of don't like having super the IBO, you, the, the yeah. WB on the end. You have the super middleweight light, and you just, it's like four different classes and really one weight class. Right, and true. It's kind of, you don't know who's in what, and you just kind of just throw boxes out. You know, they, they can't fight each other because he's in this weight class. He got to come down a couple yeah. pounds and do this. And I kind of wanted to go to the old days where you just have, you know, you're just a middleweight. You had heavyweight, light, light heavyweight, heavyweight, middleweight. Waterweight, lightweight. I mean, it was it was it was easy. It was about eight divisions. Now now there's there's like you say, there's so much of them, and it seems like now the top fighters don't really fight a lot of people. That's why boxing. That's that is the main reason why boxing has lost its popularity. It's not even the weight classes. It's not the belts. It's the best won't fight the best when they're when they're at both at their peaks. Just like the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. That fight should have happened five seven years ago. That's what I'm saying. I still say the result would have been the same. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. But it should have happened then. You know, now, it, it, was, it, was, it was five years past its prime, at least. At least five years. You know, when they were both at the top. See, that's, what, that's why when I get interviewed a lot, I'll, I'll get asked this. Is Floyd Mayweather the best ever? I said, no. TBE stands to me for the best of this era. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, if those five names I mentioned, Hagler, Hearns, Benitez, Duran, and Leonard, those five guys fought each other. They round robin. If you put Floyd Mayweather in the mix... He fought all five of those guys. Would Floyd Mayweather still walk away with it all? I, I say he would lose at least three. No, at least three. If not all five. <laughs> he, ain't, he, would not, he wouldn't walk away with it all. Does that mean that he wasn't the best ever? No, because those guys were the best in their generation. They were the best, man. The best. And every super fight that happens now, welterweight super fight or middleweight super fight, who do they always try to compare it to? Hearns and Leonard or Hearns and Hagler? Or, you know, they always try to compare it, but there's none like it. It's hard to differentiate nowadays because it seems like as if guys are kind of dodging it. Mm. I would say one one person I would put out there, Golovkin. I never, I, never, I, never, I never seen him fight anybody that's, that's worth Right. That you would think, you know, who can challenge this guy? I want to see him fight somebody like Andre Ward. Oh, man, he can't mess with Ward. That's, that's, that's one thing. Or I would say Adrian Broner. He smacks Broner. Broner's too little for him. No, I'm saying, I mean, it's just oh, like, Broner, yeah. just throwing out guys. Like, oh, okay. I wouldn't want to see Broner fight somebody in his tier yeah. class. It seems like he's just kind of taking... When he does, he gets beat. That's, that's right. Broner, Broner's super hype. He's not, he's not that good. He's, he's good, but he's not, he's not elite. Like Floyd Mayweather was an elite fighter. Mm -hmm. Floyd Mayweather, I mean, he can fight. He can box. He's smart. Um, he could beat any... He, at Golovkin, maybe at, at not at middleweight, he couldn't fight a lot. But if, if Golovkin was smaller, I'd, I'd take Floyd. I'd just outbox him. Golovkin is, a, is is strong. He is mowing these guys down. But yeah, I would like to see him. If they're talking about him fighting uh, Canelo. Uh, Canelo. That's one I would want to see. No, that's gonna be a good fight. I'm. I, hmm, that's gonna be a good fight. I'm not sure. I, I have might, to watch tapes. I, will, I, will, I would have to go with Canelo. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with Canelo. He's just too powerful. Mm. He's pretty good defensively and. It it will be I would say it will be a slugfest, but I think I think Canelo will get him. Yeah. It will it will go the distance. It ain't gonna be no knockout in Golovkin. You don't think so? No. Oh yeah. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with I'm gonna have to go with Golovkin on that one. I'm gonna go with Triple G on that. We're one. gonna we gonna watch the fight together. Yeah, we'll do we'll, that. we'll link up and we'll watch the fight <laughs> yeah, together. We'll do that. Here, here, here's here's one interesting question. I always I just wanna know. Do you think boxing is too much of a business now than it was back? Oh, absolutely. Then? It is. It's it's. And that's what that's what's hurting the sport. I can't I can't fault the fighters. Mm -hmm. I can't fault fault Floyd Mayweather. Guy was genius in his career. He had a genius career. He had Leonard Ellaby and those guys moved him. <laughs> you can make all that money and take a little 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 beating as possible. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. But uh, it is too business too business like, and that's why these major fights are not happening. Then everybody feels like, oh, I should get sixty percent, and you should get forty percent. I'm the big man. Let's just let's just make some money and let's fight. Let's give the fans what they want. People want people that'll fight. That was always my thing in my career. When they call me for a fight, I say I'll take it. Right. I don't. Who? Yeah, I'll take it. Some people they just kind of touch like you should fight so and so. Like, oh, no, turn, they want to kind of throw, throw the financial. I didn't turn anybody out. Turn nobody down. I fought anybody they, they wanted me to fight. When I came up, 
as as a contender. You can check you can check my records. I fought all kinds of contenders coming up. One of the magazines, I don't know if it was Ring or one of the magazines, did an article on me one time saying, "This guy is not taking an easy way to the top. He is fighting. I was fighting top ten contenders back to back to back. I was fighting everybody. They throw name at me. I say take it, take it, because I had that mindset. I knew I could fight. I knew I kept myself in great shape. Let's fight. Let's see who's the best." You know, king of the mountain, like the kids when you used to hurry down the snow hill. Let's see if we can stay on the mountain longest, you know? <laughs> Here, we're going to get to the fun part. Before, before we exit out, we're going to get to the fun part. Who was your favorite boxer growing up? Oh, man, it was, I loved Tommy Hearns, and I loved Muhammad Ali, and Ray Leonard. All, all three of those, and Marvin Hagler. I had four, man. Those were <laughs> my guys. I love those guys. Greatest boxing match you ever saw? Well, I mean, one of one of the greatest fights only went three rounds. And that was Hagler Hearns. That was an absolute great fight. But I'm going to tell you some the, those Mickey Ward and Arturo Gotti fights. Yes, man, you you can't hardly find fights like that unless you go watch a Rocky movie. One, one, one. Me and my dad watched this. You remember the Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales? Oh man. Two thousand. Oh man. That was like the first time I seen a live slug. They didn't back up. They no. Didn't punch. They just yeah. Those are fights. Punches back. Nonsense. That's what the fans want to see right that's, there. That's all I, want. I, love, I see a couple of them when you watch uh, a lot of Mexican fighters. Like they fight to the death. Yeah. Like no, no, no blocking, no nothing. They just come. And that's up. why they can feel 80,000, 90,000 people in the stadium to watch a fight because people love a fight. What's <laughs> to make to create the greatest boxer? Just taking some of your favorite fighters. Who would you mix in to make that perfect fighter? Like does it have a defense like Floyd or? Man, if you so so so, okay, I would take Tommy Hearns' right hand. I would take uh, Mickey Ward's left hook to the body. <laughs> I would take Marvin Hagler's chin. That dude never been. I would take Muhammad Ali's uh, his speed. If we're gonna build a heavyweight fight, I'd take Muhammad Ali's speed, his his flu his fluidity, and just his mental toughness. I mean, Muhammad Ali was the most probably the most mentally tough guy that ever boxed, in my, in my opinion. Not only what he dealt with inside the ring, but what that man dealt with outside the ring and was still able to carry himself inside the ring the way that he did. Muhammad Ali, man, is, is a rare, unique person. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. I've got to meet him a couple times. That, that's, that's been a blessing and an honor for me to be able to do that, to shake the hands of the greatest, you know what I mean? So um, those guys right there, I don't, I don't really see Sugar Ray Leonard throw his speed in there too. Uh, who's Jab? Larry Holmes. I had to throw Larry Holmes' Jab in there. Larry Holmes' Jab with Tommy Hearns right hand behind it. I don't need all that other stuff. <laughs> all right. You, 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 it won't last no more than two rounds. That's nah. okay. <laughs> for, 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 for the XL, the show is called Where Are They Now? You got, you got to let everybody know what you've been up to since, since you stepped out of boxing. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on the commission for the state of Michigan. I got appointed by the governor last year to sit on the boxing commission. And um, so I'm under with some really great guys. We're trying to make some positive changes in Michigan. Um, I'm working on opening up my own insurance company. I currently work with a company out of Ohio, actually. We're going to bring it to Michigan, too. Carol Insurance, can I give you your props? So. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm a busy guy, man. I'm on the go a lot. Uh, you know, I'm all over the place. It took us a while to hook up for this interview. Right. But, uh, we got it done. We got but we're here. And uh, so, yeah, man, life is good. Life is good. All right, man. So thank you for coming on the show. My we, pleasure. We, we will definitely link up a couple My times. My pleasure, for sure. All right. All right. All right. And this is Where Are They Now with Bronco McCarthy.